Mr. Sims. <clears throat> yes. You don't wear contact lenses, do you? No, no, sir. With your untraveled sight, whom did you see? Well, I, I saw something. But I, 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 I couldn't say who it was. All right, what was the something you saw? Say. You couldn't say or you wouldn't say? Well, I just... I, I just couldn't say. I, couldn't, wouldn't, shouldn't. Mr. Sims, you're exhausting my patience and making a mockery of these proceedings. I will give you one last chance. The consequences of your response will be dire. By dire, Mr. Sims, I mean your future will be jeopardized permanently. Now, for the last time, what did you see last Tuesday night outside my office? I saw somebody. I saw somebody. Good. But did you see their size and shape? Yeah. And they were the size and shape of whom? They were the size and shape of... Almost any Baird student, sir. I am left with no real witness. Mr. Willis's testimony is not only vague, it is unsubstantiated. The substance I was looking for, Mr. Sims, was to come from you. Sorry. I'm sorry too, Mr. Sims. Because you know what I'm going to do, and as much as I can't punish Mr. Havemeyer, Mr. Potter, or Mr. Jameson, and I won't punish Mr. Willis. He's the only party to this incident who is still worthy of calling himself a bared man. I'm going to recommend to the disciplinary committee that you be expelled. Mr. Sims, you are a cover-up artist, and you are a liar. But not a snitch! Excuse me? No, I don't think I will. Mr. Slade, this is such a crock of shit! Please watch your language, Mr. Slade. You are in the Baird School, not a barracks. Mr. Sims, I will give you one final opportunity to speak up. Mr. Sims doesn't want it. He doesn't need to be labeled. Still worthy of being a bad man. What the hell is that? What is your motto here? Boys, inform on your classmates. Save your hide. Anything short of that, we're going to burn you at the stake? Well, gentlemen, when the shit hits the fan, some guys run and some guys stay. Here's Charlie facing the fire, and there's George hiding in Big Daddy's pocket. And what are you doing? You're going to reward George and destroy Charlie. Are you finished, Mr. Slade? No, I'm just getting warmed up. I don't know who went to this place. William Howard Taft, William Jennings Bride, William Tell, whoever. Their spirit is dead, if they ever had one. It's gone. You're building a rat ship here. A vessel for seagoing snitches. And if you think you're preparing these minnows for manhood, you better think again. Because I say you are killing the very spirit this institution proclaims it instills. What a sham. What kind of a show are you guys putting on here today? I mean, the only class in this act is sitting next to me. And I'm here to tell you, this boy's soul is intact. It's non-negotiable. You know how I know? Someone here, and I'm not going to say who, offered to buy it. Only Charlie here wasn't selling. Sir, you're out of order. Out of order. I show you out of order. You don't know what out of order is, Mr. Trask. I'd show you, but I'm too old. 
I'm too tired. I'm too fucking blind. If I were the man I was five years ago, I'd take a flamethrower to this place. Out of order. Who the hell do you think you're talking to? I've been around, you know. There was a time I could see. And I have seen boys like these, younger than these, their arms torn out, their legs ripped off. But there is nothing like a sight of an amputated spirit. There is no prosthetic for that. You think you're merely sending this splendid foot soldier back home to Argonne with his tail between his legs, but I say you are executing his soul. And why? Because he's not a bad man. Bad man. You hurt this boy, you're going to be bad bums. The liar. And Harry, Jimmy, Trent, wherever you are out there, fuck you too. Stand down, Mr. Slade. I'm not finished. As I came in here, I heard those words. Cradle of leadership. Well, when the bow breaks, the cradle will fall. And it has fallen here. It has fallen. Makers of men. Creators of leaders. Be careful what kind of leaders you're producing here. I don't know if Charlie's silence here today is right or wrong. I'm not a judge or jury. But I can tell you this. He won't sell anybody out to buy his future. And that, my friends, is called integrity. That's called courage. Now that's the stuff leaders should be made of. Now I have come to the crossroads in my life. I always knew what the right path was. Without exception, I knew. But I never took it. You know why? It was too damn hard. Now here's Charlie. He's come to the crossroads. He has chosen a path. It's the right path. It's a path made of principle that leads to character. Let him continue on his journey. You hold this boy's future in your hands, committee. It's a valuable future. Believe me, don't destroy it. Protect it. Embrace it. It's going to make you proud one day, I promise you. 